You know, we're doing this subject called broken tonight. But we want to not just leave it broken. We want to say broken but able to be repaired. Because that's the reality. But we need to go on exploration of what it's about because some people are broken and don't know it. Some people are broken and not but don't know how to fix it. Some people are broken and don't want to fix it. And we would wonder why. But the reality is that's the way it is. That's the way we sometimes live. So broken, what is it? Exactly, what is it? And how does it happen? Because, uh, you know, for some people, you know, the ones who, who really don't know what's causing or why, why it's happened or why they feel like they do or all, all the rest of it, we need to ask this question. So we need to ask the question perhaps first of how do we get to be broken? And there are three areas, I think, that are key things to, to becoming broken. The first one's the family circumstances. And I can talk about this. When I first became a follower of Jesus, this was my biggie. It was awfully big. I was broken. I was hurting. In fact, the very reason I became a Christian was because a guy prayed for me that my family would no longer accuse me of something that I'd done years earlier, but still kept persisting in accusing me. That had done some deep wounding. But the fact that I was conceived outside of marriage and my parents got married in a registry office just before I was born and, and my brothers and sister knew all about it before I did and there was something about their attitude towards me. There was something about the relationship I had with my father that wasn't good. There were things that came out of that that conspired to create even bigger problems. And I was broken. I was really broken. So there are family things that break us. You know, dysfunctional family members, dysfunctional things that happen in families. Maybe there's been abuse, verbal, physical, whatever kind of abuse. Maybe there's been a lack of, of things that you needed. One of the worst things, I think, about uh, being in a broken situation, a family where we lived through some poverty for a while, was not having quite what other kids had. And that can make you feel broken sometimes. It's sometimes healthy not to have those things, but, but sometimes it's not good. The second area is society faults, things that bias. Did you notice a huge reaction in the media when they had hug a what? A ginga. Ginga. Ginger. I didn't like to say ginger. I don't know why. Had to be, what do you call it? Ginger. 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 Oh, I don't know. Ginger. You know, one of the things that happened in our, in our society when, when I was younger, and I don't know how powerful it is with children now, but kids with um, ginger hair, or kids who were short like I was when I was young, or kids who were fat, or kids who had eyes that were slightly crossed, or, or toes that weren't lining up properly, and I had to wear special shoes when I was younger to help line my feet. Kids who somehow didn't fit what everybody else considered normal. That can cause some real serious dysfunction, a societal thing. What about the societal pressure that goes on women? You know, the ideal woman is shaped like, isn't she? No. But that's what society portrays. But that's actually not right. My woman's quite differently shaped to their books. She's very petite. She doesn't need to feel inadequate because I love her as she is. In the same way that God loves me as I am and he loves every one of us here. As we are. That doesn't mean to say we don't need to modify some of our habits. All of us. Some of us. I'll breathe it in the rest of the day so you don't uh, look at me anymore. You know? The fact of the matter is that there are things in society that cause us actually to feel like we're broken. 
We're not fit enough. We're not good enough. We don't fit somehow. And it sits there looking at us. The third area I like to touch on is our own actions. You saw the young man here. I don't know whether you recognize the story, but it's really a biblical story. A story about a young guy who decides to ask his dad for his fortune. He leaves home. He goes away. And after a wee while, using his money the wrong way, doing all the wrong things, he decides he'll go back home. And surprise, surprise, dad welcomes him. And he didn't expect that. He was willing just to be a servant because he knew his servants were better, the, his father's servants were better off than he was without even being a servant anywhere. So he's willing to go home. Our own actions can create situations, our anger, our frustration. And yes, they can be created because of other destructive things in our lives. But sometimes we just do it or we have inherited it. And so we perpetuate it and we can stop it. I want to defy what society says, that people are prone towards things and they're biased towards them. They, they claim they've proven it medically or, or psychologically or all sorts of different ways. They claim they've proven that people are biased towards certain bad behavior. Well, I want to challenge that. I want to say that we make decisions, that we make choices. But they can leave us broken sometimes. You see, because the reality is that being broken has impact. Its, its impact on us is real. The reality is that it creates relationship problems. When we're broken, it does create rea- relationship problems. Now, I know there's lots of people who are broken who get together, and I'd like to suggest that's why gangs and other such groups form. Broken people all being together because at least they have something in common. But they're broken. There's some people here who know well what that brokenness is all about and how destructive it can be. And it impacts our relationships with others. It impacts our relationship with God. I'd like to suggest that many of the people in society that have wanted to say they don't believe in God, the real issue isn't whether they believe in Him or not, because I know I've been there when they're dying, some of them. And suddenly they want me to pray for them. Ha ha. Not believing in God suddenly disappeared out the window. And that's been recorded through history many, many times where people have said those kinds of things. But see, really, it's just a dysfunctional relationship. It's a relationship where we're not connected with God. And we can't. We wonder why. Because it can do all sorts of things to us. It can make us feel heavy, lethargic, feeble, stubborn, aggressive, negative, relationally poor in all sorts of different areas, in different ways. We all know the thing that impacts us deep down, but we don't sometimes know quite why. But it's there all the same. In fact, it will rob us of really having a great life, like our young man here earlier tonight. You see, being broken actually leads to dysfunction. It leads to dysfunction in our lives. In other words, we don't function very well. We tend to want to hang on to being broken because we don't know what it is to be free to surrendering our stubbornness and arrogance is really hard. We tend to be staunch because of the dysfunction in ourselves. That's the reality. One of the, the, the most awful things I struggle with as a pastor in, in this community uh, over the years, and it's certainly gotten better than what it was, but the, uh, this, I'm not just talking about this church community, I'm talking about the wider community. There's a number of people out there who are, are very dysfunctional or have been very dysfunctional and are struggling with it because they don't know the difference. And when, when I talk with them and they talk with me and I say to them, do you realize that this is what's happening in your life? And they say, I just feel terrible. And I say, I know you feel terrible, but what you need to be aware of is the causes of it. Because if you understand the causes, then you will be able to change the way that you live. And there are often people who go and do things that they regret. 
And that's, that's what we're talking about here tonight. There are plenty of people in the Bible who are like that, for those of you who have never read the Bible. There are people like the rich young ruler who Jesus turned around and said to him, well, you've done all these things, but you need to give away your wealth and come and follow me. But see, he was so broken because he was broken with his possessiveness about wealth, determined to have more. And the more he had, it never made any difference. And he really wanted to enter the kingdom of heaven because that's a question he asked. But he got, when he got told the answer, he got a bit of a surprise and he walked away sadly. We have the prodigal, who was the guy we saw here on stage. We have the father whose daughter died, who was broken. We have Jacob, who lost his son, when, and, and, and he thought his sons had told him that, that, that his son Joseph had been killed. And all the time, they'd actually sold him off for slavery. We had Joseph, who was so, had every reason to be totally bro- broken with the rejection of his parents, uh, sorry, of his brothers, and, uh, and, and the mistreatment by people through the life that he had. And yet, one interesting thing, out of all those stories, Joseph was the one who didn't let his brokenness, the, the cause of so much pain, make him so broken that he couldn't respond well. In fact, when his brothers turned up, who had so badly mistreated him, he was the one that reached out with love because he had a confidence in his God. You see, the truth of the matter is he understood something really valuable. Broken is not what God wants. God does not want people who are broken. Now, he doesn't, it's not that he doesn't want them near him. He doesn't want people to be broken. But when we are broken, God actually wants us. Brokenness is not a place God takes us to or wants to leave us in. And so some people say, why did God do this to me? Well, God didn't. God didn't do it to you. Either others did it to you or you did it to yourself. But one of the things that God was really deeply concerned about, and you see it in that illustration with Jesus with the, with the woman who was a prostitute, he didn't want that for her at all. And as some of you sitting here tonight, I want to say this really up front, who are broken inside, and some of you here need to be free. This is what God's response is to this whole thing. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those who are contrite. People have often twisted that word contrite to mean they've humbled themselves. Actually, it's it's not what the Hebrew says. The Hebrew means to be crushed. Actually, it says to be crushed as much as to be crushed like powder. That's how badly crushed it's talking about. It's kodor. It's a Hebrew word for this. And it means crushed. It doesn't mean humbled or whatever. And I've heard some preachers falsely preach that. The Hebrew is extremely clear. You can check it up for yourself. Get on, get on, on, on the internet. Go to Esword and download the Bible program called Esword. It's an old King James. And you find that word. You type in the word contrite and then click on it, the number beside it. And I'll come up with the full meaning of the Hebrew word. It's a very simple exercise for you to do. You see, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those who are crushed in spirit. He really does care. At the bottom end of the line, he cares ultimately for us. He's not really interested in those people who just want to be successful, want to be great in themselves. He really has a heart for those that are finding things hard. God does not and will not condemn you for being broken in some way. If you think you've got to be right before you can walk with God and know God, you've got to be right before you can get baptized, you've got to be right before you can even turn up at church, I want to tell you right now, that is absolute rubbish. God doesn't, it isn't interesting the people who think they're right. In fact, uh, Jesus points out a guy on one occasion who's putting money in. He thought he was right and he patted his chest and said, I'm great. But this humble guy came along, gave a little bit of money and said, God, I'm sorry. And that was whom God loved. He wasn't interested in the guy who thought he was right. Well, he was interested in him, but he wasn't 
saying it was okay for him to feel that he's great. Because God will not condemn you. He will not reject you. He will always bring you into his kingdom if you want that. But he does not want you to, be, to stay broken. And that's important. And there's some of you here that have become Christians in the church and you're still broken. I want to tell you now, that's not his intention and he doesn't want it. And from today onwards, I want to declare war on brokenness so that people will know that they are free and won't have to struggle with the things they've been struggling with. If you've been struggling with things, I can tell you now, it's caused from something broken in your life. And you need to know the freedom. We can end up with brokenness through our own fault. But we don't need to give up on ourselves at that point because God doesn't, you see. It needs for us to do something called repentance. And if we don't have it, we can't be repaired. If we can't genuinely say, God, God I'm really sorry for what I've done, for the mess I've made. And I want you to to really change my life. I want to not be broken anymore. If we, if we can't bring ourselves just to say sorry, then, well, I'm sorry, but you're in trouble at that point. Because the truth of the matter is, if you are willing to put yourself in a place with God that's in a good place, at the end of the day, God will never, ever leave you. He will never, ever forsake you. He will always be there. He'll be batting for you. He'll be calling for you. He'll be cheering for you. He'll be standing for you. He'll be supporting you. He'll be encouraging you. He'll be supplying for you. He'll be doing so much that you just couldn't even believe. And I know what that's like to live with that. It's awesome. Amen? Amen? He will stay near you. And if you let him, he will deliver you out of it. You don't need to live broken lives anymore. Doesn't matter whether you claim to know him or not. You see, the reality is that Christian wholeness and brokenness are incompatible. And I hear people sometimes in the church, sometimes outside the church, who say, you know, it's good to be broken before God and then he can restore you. Well, I want to tell you something. That's actually a misuse of terminology and it's a misunderstanding of God's grace. All God wants from us is to be in a place where he can work with us in his way and it's not determined by the way that other people might think. Some of us end up with residue anger or other things. And we, we may even live for some time as a Christian with those things sitting in our lives. And then it pops up. And we say, where the hang did that come from? It comes from brokenness. Some of us just can't resist doing things that we know we shouldn't be doing. But it seems to be uh, pervading, pervading into our life. It seems to be invading us. It seems to be taking us Captive, out of the blue, unexpected, or it may have been there for some time. I can tell you now, that's because in some way you're broken. But that's not what God wants for any one of us here. The interesting thing, when Jesus first began his ministry, he read out of the book of Isaiah, and he read these words, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Release from brokenness of all kinds. That's all that's really talking about. It really is clear. So I want to ask the question, how does change happen? How does change actually happen? Well, it happens in two ways. It can happen gradually or it can happen suddenly. And I, I envied people when I first became a Christian because some people went and they, 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 they responded to God and they said, God, I want you to heal me. And some people prayed over them and they went, and they were different people from that day on, totally different people. You know one of the most frustrating things about my early Christian life? God changed a lot of me, but there was some stuff that took a long time to change. And in fact... I realized that even those people that had the sudden change, there was some gradual stuff still happening that God needed to sort out, and he needs to sort out our brokenness, wherever it is. To some, the Lord gives a sudden break, breaking followed by a gradual one. And to others, he gives this 
uh, allows that they have constant daily trials, the things they go through, and a lot of it's been created through their family environment. Even. And I can say that with integrity, that that's what I had. You know, I came to, came to God, and God started changing me, but my family didn't change much. In fact, they became even more anti-me, because now as a Christian, that made them feel guilty, and it made things worse. It didn't make things better. Some people say, if you come to know Jesus, everything will get fixed just like that. Well, you get fixed inside, and you have the ability to handle things you never used to be able to handle, but some of the external things are pretty hard sometimes. But sometimes, you go along this little wee plotty journey, and, and some of you here have probably been on this journey, and you, you, you struggle with things, and you find some things hard, and, and you, you know, God, help me, as you cry. And then suddenly one day, and we saw this happen when we were in Malaysia just in the last couple of weeks, the people that we prayed for, that had gone forward for, for prayer and asked God for help and all this, and suddenly God did something. I was intrigued when I watched over the videos when I was making that short video for those of you who saw it this morning. Jay had taken all this video footage. There was only one camera, so mostly it's wherever Jay went that, that we had video footage, where we, Tepper and I went on our own. We didn't have any. But one of the intriguing things I discovered, there was somebody that Tepper administered to, and he had hit one core area in that person's life. And then later on, I, I, I hadn't realized Tepper administered to him at a later date, I think it was another separate meeting, I had administered to the same guy. And when I looked at it, I thought, isn't God amazing? Because we didn't know anything. And yet that guy's brokenness got so powerfully ministered to, it was amazing. I want to encourage you tonight that God can do this for you. And I want to finish with this. I really would love you to make the choice to move from brokenness and bondage over to the other side, to freedom and healing. And I'm going to pray a prayer right now and invite you to join me. I want you to, to go on a journey where, where none of that rubbish from the past will control your lives anymore. If something will happen, that there'll be a huge difference in your life. And you'll be able to say from today onwards, something happened, something changed, because God cares for me. So I'd like you to join me in prayer. If you don't want to, that's your choice. But be careful. You might not want to because of your brokenness. So let, join me if you'd be willing to. Father God, we want to come to you tonight. We want to ask you, God, that you would take anything in our lives that is broken, anything, whether we recognize it or not, and to reshape us. God, we'd love you to fix it. And Lord, where we need to be involved in the process of it being fixed, God, we want to tell you we're available tonight. We want to say we, have, we are sorry for the number of times we've offended you, we've done wrong, we've continued in our brokenness, we've continued sinning. Just like the prostitute we saw before. God, take us. Help us to change our attitudes, our, our anger, our frustration, our negativity. Help us to change our tongues, our thoughts, our minds. Help us to treat others around us differently and to give them the same kind of grace that you've extended to us. God, we are sorry, both for the things that we have done, which has been broken stuff, God, we would love to receive your healing for the stuff that was beyond our control as well. So move by your power tonight, God, and release each one of us here. In Jesus' mighty name. And all the people said, and all the people said, praise God. Now, I'm going to do one thing. Yeah, it's fine. I'm going to do one thing. Um, I'm going to make sure that if there's people, I'm going to have to run away myself because I've got to take a group of people away. But if, if any of you would like to talk.
talk through some stuff, process some stuff or whatever. There's one or two of our people here who will, who will come down and, 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 and minister to your needs and maybe uh, pray with you if you feel further need to do so. If you'd like to walk with Jesus, you come and tell them that t- tonight and just say to them, hey, I really want to be fixed. I want to be whole. And, and you do that. May God bless you. Have an awesome week.